guys and welcome back to La Cancha. Things are heating up here in North America and, and it is heating up in Spain at the moment with El Clasico, with derbies, with goals. It's full of excitement. Oscar, are you ready to talk about the humiliation that you witnessed on Wednesday? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you, you lost my words. This is not you. <laughs> it's... It's a sick joke. <laughs> okay, let's start by analyzing the first half. I thought we played all right in the first half. You know, like yeah, we were the we were creating the better chances. You know, the some things weren't really going our way in terms of like just little details in terms of like so, a shot that have obviously been a corner kick, the penalty appeal that that's not a penalty for me. Why do you want yeah. me to keep his hand? And then the cruel twist of fate happens when we come closest to scoring and immediately they score. <laughs> a classic Real Madrid move that just completely infuriates me. But then I'm like, you know, I'm telling everyone around me, don't worry, don't worry. We'll get, we'll handle this in the second half. <laughs> 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 and the second half, my team didn't come out to play. We just, I, I don't know who came out, but I didn't recognize that team because that was just that was just awful. Like a whole Barcelona team at home with forty five percent position in the second half. How? Yeah. Can we put this at the door, Shavi? Because this is almost the obtain time more than he's been shown up in a knockout game against a really difficult opponent. And the thing with Shavi is, I feel when his teams are under the cosh, when things aren't going his way, he's too slow to make changes. He's not as he's not a very reactive manager, in my opinion. Yeah, you can say that. But to be honest, while you can look at the important players who are missing and have some sympathy, I was going to have sympathy if we lost the game, but not like that. Not yeah. like a bunch of yellow belly chickens. That I. Not just Javi, the players. I'm like, what what happened? Like, what did you people say at halftime? <laughs> I, I like want to know what the dressing room was like. Like, did you people say, you know what? We don't care about the couple barriers. Let's just because that, that's what it felt like. <laughs> yeah. I know the worst team. I've never in my life seen Real Madrid embarrass us. I thought I'd never see that. Yeah. <laughs> This is the first time Real Madrid, I think they scored four against Barcelona since 2008. It's the first time a Real Madrid player scored a hat-trick at Camp Nou since Ferenc Puskas in the 60s. So, scoring. Yeah. No, what? We let that Vinicius boy score. This is unforgivable, man. And yeah. then to, to I, I top think... everything off, sorry, to top everything off, the least I expected tonight was goals and what did they do? They didn't score. <laughs> they stink of the joint even worse than they did. Okay, what they, okay, what they did on Wednesday was bad, but letting Gatsaniga keep a clean sheet is unforgivable. <laughs> yeah, welcome to the club, man. It's just Barca and Valencia. Let that happen. <laughs> but, but to go back on my Xavi point, right? It's my issue with him is that you can the fans can see the game is going away from Barcelona, and mm-hmm. this reminded me of the United game at Old Trafford in a different way. Obviously, it wasn't as bad as the United game, but I feel in that game, you could see that the momentum was changing towards Manchester United for 10, 15 minutes before they scored mm-hmm. the second. And in this game, I felt the same way, where you can tell the momentum is going towards Real Madrid. It's strongly towards Real Madrid. And Xavi doesn't make any changes. He doesn't change the squad, either in attitude, either tactically, either in terms of personnel. I, I feel if he's to be a manager of Barcelona long term, that's something he's going to need to work on because you know what, Barca, they haven't won La Liga in three, four years. So maybe this season he can get away with that. And it is important to win the league. But I feel knowing how Barcelona primes are, knowing the standards that they've set for other managers, if this continues in two, three years, I don't think Xavi will be a Barcelona manager unless he makes some changes. To be fair to Xavi, remember this first goal came at the end of the half? 
Actually, no, forget forget that one. They had half they they made things worse at halftime somehow. Yeah. Their yeah, second but... goal came early in the second half, and then the third goal came soon after that. So unless he was going to change something at halftime, I don't really see what window where he could have made a change quick. Because managers usually like to give fifteen minutes after the second half. So the, the, the way Real Madrid blitzed us after the half time, I don't really blame him too much, but I take your point today, for instance. Yeah. You can clearly see Rafinha is thinking of the joint and so far is a ghost. Like the Alba change he made was actually made us more threatening. So I wonder what took him so long to do it. Yeah. Like Roma did blitz, did blitz Barcelona, but I'm just saying if this was an Escobar Verde, TK said to him, <laughs> they wouldn't they wouldn't be surviving at the moment. <laughs> I mean that that's down to fans being I don't I don't want to talk about the fans before yeah. I actually lose my cool. <laughs> right now I'm just controlling my rage in a nice way towards the players and the coach for what has been a disappointing and then mere week. Is this is this a failure for Barcelona not winning the Copa del Rey? Is it the, if you lost two one on aggregate, I won't hold it against them. We have we have like I even told you last week. I think this will be a draw, like maybe a two two. I was writing that there were four goals, but all four goals went to one team. But like, it's how again with some of the things that happened to Barcelona, it's how it happens. Like, yeah. for example, I feel like if we that four three against Liverpool were right to like. If it was a more balanced 4-3, I don't think people would be that angry about it as against how we blew a three goal lead. Same thing with Roma. Mm. Like there, there are ways to lose. Yeah. And then there's what honestly, I mean Or you, you can also add Eintracht to the list, like losing in that fashion at Camp Nou was also somewhat embarrassing. But bro, well, like yeah, I, I tried to repress. I tried to keep. I, f- I didn't want to mention that. I would say I don't feel the PTSD. <laughs> yeah, but, but let, let's move on to brighter things. Real Madrid, uh, at least on Wednesday, they were on top of the world. What did they do right in that game, do you feel? Well, you know, we said, is he that to be stubborn or he'll go gung ho or he can actually find a good middle ground? And he found that good middle ground. Um, kind of thing, uh, funny enough, he was he kind of started again a bit wobbly until he got injured. Then after he got injured, he completely <laughs> locked Rafinha off. Yeah. I felt like that was an important like attacking change he did. Another thing he did was starting Rodrigo. Rodrigo, even though he didn't score, he played a really good role in two of the goals Real Madrid scored. Yeah, you know, he really did in the counter attack for the first one. Alongside. <laughs> I just wish Christensen was fit, man. If Christensen was fit, it wouldn't have been this bad. But anyway, yeah, yeah. But that... should, should 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 Barcelona be making an argument that if one player is fit, like it wouldn't be this bad? No, okay. So bad I, I think the I think the team, yeah, I think the team is we need more quality squad there because you look at Bayern. Bayern get lots of injuries every season. They just have enough depth to cover for it. Well, us we don't have enough and. I mean, we're also battling battles of the pitch, so <laughs> yeah. that's for our yeah. money to figure out a way to solve in the summer. Yeah, true. But let's let's just regard to back to Real Madrid, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Karen Benzema, we had a few words to say about him before the podcast. Like I remember in, in the El Clasico discussion, we were discussing whether Real Madrid should get someone to replace Benzema. He didn't look like it was his best, but then he scores a hat trick against Valladolid, the lead. He bring a sip. Now he scores a hat trick against the Fergan, like. He's, he's getting in the Champions League form, isn't he? Unfortunately. <laughs> well, I don't know why he got subbed off early against Villarreal. I guess yeah. injury or anything, but you know, he's someone that <laughs> Chelsea lost again too, so that's not something they'll be looking forward to. <laughs> no, they won't be looking forward yeah. to that. But, but the good thing for Real Madrid is, is the first final in the Copa del Rey in nearly nine years. Like I think, I think last time they got to the final was against Barcelona. 
Yeah, nine yards is good. Nine yards go, but and we'll talk about their opponents on sooner later on the podcast. But for Real Madrid, the week the the midweek went really well, but the weekend, well, Samu Chukwese brought them back to earth. And this was a much changed Real Madrid lineup uh, with six changes. And what went wrong for them in this game? Like, was it just because I really enjoyed the way there was a battle between Samu Chukwese and Vinicius, and it was really about who can lead the team the best. And in this game, Vinicius, um, not Vinicius, Chukwese came out on top. Yeah, Chukwese had arguably the game of his life, you know. <laughs> What, yeah, I think Nacho is still searching for his soul in that movie. Honestly, like this guy sold <laughs> that <dream>. to <laughs> him. Like that, that was that was just that was just filthy. I know, like the second goal, he beats Courtois in a place where Courtois can't even hope to save it. But the first goal, what did to Nacho is screaming now? <laughs> yeah, like it's it, yeah, it's like real. Like this was a huge performance of Chukwueze stepping up to be leader of the team. Yeah, uh, and he's changed ever since Sakan came in. Like, he's turned into such an important figure because under Unai Emery, you could say, yes, he was a very skillful player and he was a good squad player, but did Villarreal really need him? Maybe not, but now it's um, Pique Setien who stepped in. And the one thing that, let's not forget, Villarreal, we accused them of being Gerard Moreno dependent and Gerard wasn't mm-hmm. even on, on the pitch for this game or he wasn't, he didn't start for this game and you see the way Samuel Chukwueze took control of this. I'll be somewhat scared because his contract might run out in 2024. And because of the prior manager who didn't really like put full faith in him, maybe VRL was thinking, okay, we can just cash him into a lower tier club in England for 30 or 40 million. But now that 40 million in British pounds looks very low given how he's improved on the pitch yet. Yeah, but I think with someone like Chukwueze, we have to wait for him to actually... I, I feel like now is his chance to become more consistent and start living up to his potential. Yeah. Because much like Chukwueze, Villarreal can beat Real Madrid, which they've done before, and then go lose to Elche or something. Yeah. So, yeah, they've done the double over Real Madrid. Like, the first time they've done that in the club's history. And you have to give credit to Kike Setien because he's a guy who... In the European stage, I don't really rate him because of what of what we've seen with either with Betis, with Villarreal this season, or with Barcelona famously. But domestically in the league, he he does really well for clubs like this. Um, he has his very good record at the Bernabeu. He hasn't he's only lost once in his past five visits, I believe, and that was when he was coach of Barcelona, which is very strange. Uh, yeah. I mean, he's done some good teams. He's done some... Uh, I mean, the fact is that Villarreal should still be in the conference. And, uh, that, that, that's, that's, that's gone now. Yeah. If he can somehow sneak them into top four, that would be, be an amazing season. Yeah, but they're not, they're not so far. They're four points off for Alcacidad. So that if, if, he, if Villarreal get top four, which is the possibility, do you keep Pique Setien? Uh, I guess I guess that's keeping for another season because getting to our four would be something Emery didn't do. Yeah. So, but we know we know you know Emery never like he's only got to top four yeah. once and or he's only gotten top four in the past decade with PSG. Mm-hmm. So uh, like with you know Emery, what it gives you is that European prestige of mm-hmm. rubbing shoulders with Bayern mm-hmm. with Juventus. When domestically, like at least in Spain in the last decade, he hasn't really been a really top manager in La Liga. Yeah. Well, um, I think if you get up for through the league, that's huge progress of Villarreal. So there's Sakin him would kind of be, be a weird one. So I just keep him, keep him to the next season. And if, even if he doesn't get up for, at least if they have a strong end to the season, I think that warrants him staying. Yeah, and given the fact that, as you rightly said, their squad has been debilitated, they've lost a lot of um, players and bodies in the winter, this this is this has been a very good sign. And we just have to wait. We have to see whether... Because if they beat Real Madrid at the Bernabeu and then they lose to Valladolid next week, then it'll be all for nothing. And 
we might be having a conversation about it just again. Yeah, that's that's what I was like. As long as he, I, I was going to say top four, but then I'm like, that that objective is too. <laughs> It's too, it's too. I don't know the word to put. Like you can get top four by fumbling your way over the line, or you can fail to get top four, but you have a very strong end to the season. So I feel like any decision strongly should be the directive to whether they keep him or not. Sure. And let's move back to Real Madrid. Uh, they, right. given what we know with <laughs> Barcelona and Barcelona dropping points tonight, with Real Madrid. If they had won this game, they might have been 10 points behind. Have they sort of let the league slip, given what we've seen with Barcelona recently? And they, they've had some games where they didn't get the three points. Like, they let three points slip against Betis. Maybe in the derby, when Atleti were down to 10 men, they should have done more. I mean, all those were like... Like, you remember they started losing the league just before the World Cup. So, yeah. all... I think it was just a race of consistency. That's how the leagues are. We've been more consistent in the league. So yeah. I think 10 points, 12 points, 13 points. Yeah. It, it's not really going to do too much for them until, yeah. unless we fall off a cliff, which <laughs> I'm not. I mean, can you really blame me for being negative <laughs> after what you after know, what we saw? You know what? If, if Madrid had won in. The Classical, the league Classical. Yeah. And they had that result. I I think Madrid would have been sure to win the title. I think so. Because I, I feel that result does psychological damage. Big damage to Barcelona. But because Barcelona is so far ahead, I, I don't think anyone can catch them. You know, now that I think about it, Maybe if we lost the league classical, it would have actually fired us up for the one in the cup. Sure. I'm yeah. well with, with all those in who, who honestly knows that. Yes, yeah, who knows? Uh-huh. Who knows? Well, if the Ariel are to finish in top four, they're going to have to topple Real Sociedad and Real Sociedad they they're winning and next week they have a really big game. They have they have to play Athletic Club and they've been Real Sociedad, they've been in top four for five months. If they lose it out on this top four, how big of a failure is that going to be for them? Exactly. Like, really big missed opportunity. Because like, basically, they've not made any progress. I mean, having consistency is all good, but when an opportunity to make progress like this season is presenting yourself, itself, like you have to take that chance, you know? Yeah, you definitely but have to. A four point cushion at this point is. It's a decent enough cushion provided you don't slip up more than once. And yeah. Villarreal's consistency is something that we're putting a question mark over. So. No. Yeah, we're definitely doing that. But in terms of games, I, I, I just have been there. Ralph says that they might have the tougher games in the running. Because next week, they go to play Atletico San Mames. They have Betis away, Osasuna away. They welcome Real Madrid, which might or might not be a tough game given Real Madrid might or might not care about the league anymore. They have to go to Camp Nou. They have to go to the Metropolitano. I, I, I feel, given this line of fixtures, it might be tough for them to even to retain that top four. Hmm. And looking at Villarreal's fixtures, they're not that bad besides Atletico and because Villarreal have played against Betis twice, they played. They, they don't really have any other top four because uh, everyone else is so far. Yeah. Oh <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, and they I, have I the head to head over Real Sociedad if it comes down to that. Yeah, and even the Atletico game, it might be at the end of the season where Atletico do not care because they, they might be playing against Barrios and his ten kids. <laughs> yeah. Well, and. Well, the thing is that Russo said are uh, less, much less depleted than Villarreal. I think that a fully fit Russo said this season has shown they're better than Villarreal. Yeah. And to be fair to them, they've started picking up wins again. So. Yeah, they really have, and we have to remember that they've struggled so through so much injuries. And mm-hmm. at in January, we're all discussing whether they'll hold on and how well they'll do despite their injuries. And I guess now it's just. 
they're reverting to the mean, so maybe it's going to be too harsh on them. Mm -hmm, yeah. And but, next week, while it's a tough game on paper and in feeling, yeah. Athletic Club generally do way worse at home than away from home, so it might not be. Their last visit there was 4 0, but yeah. I'll be surprised if that was 4 0 again. Yeah, I, all, all I do hope for is that I hope that this is as um, good as the last derby was because the last derby was really electric, it was really mm -hmm. fun. And uh, with Athletic, they suffered a bit of, they suffered a huge setback in Copa del Rey. Um, they got knocked out by Asuna, uh, Nico Williams, and he, his social media had to be deleted because of all the nasty abuse he got, which I thought was a bit unfair. I know he didn't have his best game in terms of finishing, but mm -hmm. this is a young star who could be, if he stays in Athletic, he could be the future. Like He's a guy who's like very skillful. He has that differential quality that I, I don't think I've seen from an Athletic player ever since I'm watching Spanish football in terms of winger, in terms of, in terms of that trickery that he has mm -hmm. and that electric pace. But I'm really happy that he, his brother scores against Espanol, where he received some racist abuse. Um, he scores again, and um, that, that was a really sweet moment for me this weekend. Yeah, it was nice to see. Oh, it, was, it was especially nice to see Nyaki Williams' celebration, because when I saw his celebration, I'm like, oh, it's true. He has history with Espanol supporters. Yeah. And then, obviously, I mean, Nico didn't cover himself in glory against Espanol, but that's no excuse to just over criticize the because he's a kid you know like yeah I, like blaming Yaki for missing chances is one thing but <laughs> his brother is just starting out like give him a chance to like <laughs> yeah I, <laughs> give, I, I, give I, him I, a I, chance to grow <laughs> I might criticize I don't obviously wish I abuse his yeah also, but like but do you think that's a that's a problem in the modern social media age because it's not just him who's deleted it. Slavic and Juventus had to delete his account because of similar, similar abuse. Like, well, the thing is that I have to be careful with how I say this. <laughs> okay, let's just like this. trolls are getting worse, and people are more. How do I put it? Like. When you're on social media a lot, it's going to affect you positively or negatively a lot. So I feel like in this social media age, people, even if it's slight criticism, whether it's slight criticism or heavy criticism, people just don't like being criticized. So yeah. I think it's something we're going to see more because because it's more like a cultural thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. believe I said that without spending any party, so no, yeah. you're ready for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, never to mention the Bayana Valverde brawl, which which has which which you won't go. No, 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 that's not that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let the cops do their job. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But but going back to this game, uh, Athletic, it was, it was a. It was good. It was nice to see them win again. They're taking control of that seventh spot, yeah. and if they win against Real Sociedad, that will be a huge statement because they could get closer to Betis, which who they have to play, and maybe Europa League might not be out of the picture for them. Yeah, they have to fix their home form for because honestly, the, that home form has been so disappointing. In the other, in the other ways, what has been a very productive season, but it feels like unless they qualify for Europe or win a trophy, like it's just basically is another sideways step. Besides maybe having some players just improve their productivity like Nico. So yeah. I feel they would be hoping that either they can pick Betis to Europa or Real Madrid beats us as soon as in the final so they get conference league. Yeah. Which obviously should not happen. <laughs> yeah. uh, did, did you see um, Martin Brentwaite's goal against uh, the goal that got disallowed? Yeah, Hosselu had the Hosselu had the handball in the build-up. I thought that was harsh, no? 
Unfortunately, man, it's the rules. The intent doesn't <laughs> matter anymore to these idiots. So. Yeah, we'll, we'll go deep into La Liga refs. But for Espanyol... I'm... No, 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 this one is not. For once, the refs are into blame. It's, yeah. it's the... You know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> the Gestapo. <laughs> for Espanyol, yeah. though, I'm a bit worried about them because they have to go to Betis away. Villarreal. Sevilla. They have the derby against Barcelona, Rayo away, Atleti at home, Valencia away, which might be an easy game for them, who knows, but <laughs> they, they have to play all these teams away, and I, I just feel that we haven't spoken about them as relegation. No, uh, I, think we are, I think we have, though, but then we've always been like... Yeah, like they'll survive and stuff, but yeah. looking at the sketch they're running, it's really scary. Yeah. That's the fact that he's a, a very inexperienced manager in Sergio. So, uh, I mean, it's kind of sad. But then we have Girona now as a Catalan representative. So, <laughs> I, don't, I don't miss them that much. <laughs> yeah, you say that as a Barcelona fan. But in terms no, of. I, I mean, I, them going down won't be fun because it's already. When it happened the last time, it was fun. This yeah. time, it will just be sad because it's like. Yeah, it's, you it's, expected it's, 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 a lot better from them. True. It's if, if you look at how the season has gone, compared to the expectations they had when Hossu was signed, even after RT left, Bradford was signed, and you're like, okay. Bradford is scoring. I think Bradford has. Does he have? All, he has almost ten goals. Also, the last twelve, and these guys are nineteen. It doesn't make any <laughs> sense. Well, they do employ Sergio Gomez and Cabrera, so. Fair enough, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. That's, that's still... <laughs> no, I guess I'm comparing this to Alaves while Alaves were just surviving off Lucas and possibly <laughs> good. But then when you look at it, Alaves had a very competent defense in La Guardia, Lejeune. Yeah. And then they had Patrick who was a very good goalkeeper. The last two teams I mentioned are non-existent in Espanyol. So. Yeah. yeah, they are. But let's move on to a team that's actually Wait, doing really Pacheco well. is in Espanol. Yeah, he's in Espanol <laughs> too, yeah. Well, I guess there's only <laughs> so many things you can do now with Sergi and Cabrera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but moving on to Osasuna, Abde, why isn't he at Barcelona? Why Please. <laughs> I need this guy, but I'm tired of watching Rafinha and <laughs> I tell like I laugh, but tears are in my eyes. The performance <laughs> today was that bad. <laughs> I need someone like the bare minimum I'm asking for is to dribble past a player. Abde also- can do that. The Bele can do that. Ferran can do that. Fati doesn't want to do it. Arafinia, this guy likes much. <laughs> All of these leg overs, I used to step over and I used to see him doing the Premier League. Were they lies? Who, yeah. who was that player? <laughs> I want that player, not this guy who Kamavinga kept his back pocket. Anyway, that is brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> the, the rant had to come out at some point. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Seeing that they just made me. <laughs> anyway, that has been really, really good, especially post World Cup. Yeah, like this, he's having a really breakout year. Like he scored that, he scored the goal that knocked out Sevilla in the Copa del Rey. Scored mm-hmm. the goal, the first goal in the, the Copa del Rey tie against yeah. uh, Athletic, and yeah. he's doing really well. Like, and we saw we saw this from him last season, which is why I'm surprised that Barcelona wasted their levers on another winger when you had this guy who could play mm-hmm. in the team. I think it was that Abdi felt a bit. Right, his end product, while his dribbling was good, his end product was almost non-existent sometimes. So I felt like with him, instead of making him be a Pablo Torre, essentially, and just not play games, I felt like for him, he needed a loan. And he's doing really well. And his loan is going really good. So if we keep him, I think he'll do well. Yeah. The and if we don't keep him, we can sell him for a good amount of money. If you are shabby, what do you do? Family, <laughs> you know to do what I do. Um, I, I'm telling some players to go to China. <laughs> <laughs> I go to eat Chinese food. You gotta learn Chinese. 
No, yeah. but, but, but we need a sixth forward in any case. I feel like he's the perfect candidate to be a sixth forward. Yeah, because like Barcelona do need to sell. We're hearing rumors that maybe Javier Tebas might lighten up the FFP, but um, we it, haven't Regardless that of that, we probably need, like, I know the Barcelona fans were stupidly chanting Messi tonight, but I will take Messi with one leg over what I'm seeing right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But both Osasuna, though, they're having such a magical season. They yeah. finished seven. They're two they they suddenly points. became good in the league after achieving their cup objects. Yeah. <laughs> it's like they yeah. just sacrificed any semblance of league play just to get to the final. And now they're like, okay, let's go again in the league, boys. But, but I love seeing that. Like, if you're a team like Osasuna, and, you know, top four is beyond us, and we're not going to get relegated, why not? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have to you have to start improving at some point because they are in danger of becoming another Stoke City where they <laughs> like you know they're finishing top eleven or well they're doing really good even if they don't win the conference league this are the cup of the real, which I really hope they do yeah. they can realistically get seventh in the league too so it won't be at least you can, they have a very they have two good options for European football. Yeah, and who'd have who'd have thought that when the season first started? And but it's it's really great to see Osuna doing well. It's the first final in nearly um, in seventeen years, I think. And the one thing I like about the fact that they got into that <laughs> is the guy who scored Pablo Ibanez, who's a youth player. I think that's yeah. his first goal for Osuna. That was such a sweet story. Yeah, that was a great goal as well. And yeah. he's been. He's barely featured this season now. So soon as a team that you know played lots of youngsters, they've had them. Um, I was never there, right? But it'll come to me. It'll come to me. But yeah, they, they've played a lot of youngsters this season, and he hasn't been among those that have really got chances. But he really took a chance to immortalize himself in Osasuna folklore. Yeah, and he will be, and I guess on May sixth. Half the world will be supporting us sooner, and the rest for our Madrid. But yeah, you're overestimating oh, your estimating Real Madrid side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, speaking of Real Madrid, they're two points ahead of Atletico Madrid. We're on the march, and they played against the Raya side that was they're somewhat on the beach, but given Fran Garcia's goal, maybe Rayo they woke up a bit seeing the Atletico one, as sooner one. They were like, "Oh, we have to get into it this after we're two 0 down." But uh, there's only so much things you can say about Atleti so far. They're back to where they were when they won the league, um, as Simeone said. And even now Molina is scoring, which is something that we never thought we'd see at the start of the season. He's um, got in the World Cup, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but for Atleti, we never thought we'd see that. <laughs> now, it is that Molina, right? He, he came from the knees with a really high reputation for being an attacking fullback. So it yeah. surprised me that I'm taking this long to see he would start bearing the fruits of attacking fullback. But I guess, yeah, it's his first year, so I, I think we can see expect better from him going forward. Yeah, yeah, we definitely can. And the celebration was just such a class because Anel Correa lost his mother. Mm. And uh, the first goal was dedicated to Anel Correa and his mother, and we wish them uh, a lot of strength in the Correa family. Mm-hmm. Uh, but moving on to the game, to, to the game, I felt this was also... It was just very professional for, from Atleti right up, up until the red card where they reverted back to the old Atleti that we know, the Atleti that would sit back and buy pressure. Which and... is just absolutely <laughs> weird because how do you have... Why are you getting dominated by a team with less men? <laughs> and, and should, we, should we talk about a red card or are you... I mean, I, I, when Hannah mentioned it, shout out Hannah, by the way. When Hannah mentioned it on the group, I wasn't watching. I just wanted to ban Dragon and hit on La Liga and the Gestapo. <laughs> but looking at it, I mean, I can see why someone would be like, it's a bit hard. Because if you look at Morata's movement, <laughs> he's moving away from goal, but yeah. he's slightly. But it's one of those that I'm like, I can see why the referee gave a yellow in the first place. Yeah. And, and we'll be hypocritical here if we say, okay, because we're, we're always banging on about consistency and the ref should referee the same way. But I feel this is 
this is the kind of call where it is the right call, but you have to allow for a referee's interpretation because there's a difference, and we mentioned this in the chat, with the law of the, with the, law, of the law and the spirit of the law. Mm-hmm. And in wow. this case, the law says, um, the letter of the law, my bad, says it's a red card. When the spirit of the law, you know Morata had a bit of a dive and it was a very soft touch, and he could have, if he wanted to, he could have ran onto the ball. So mm-hmm. I think the yellow card might have been the fair decision, but with given what we have with VAR, like you always have to use the red card, and um... and you know this is the kind of incident that will make the geniuses that are in charge of this game introduce something like orange cards or something. <laughs> yeah, who knows? No, it's not. No, it's not funny. We have, we have, we need to be worried. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, honestly, given the level of refereeing that we've seen this season, I'll take anything, man. I'll take anything. And Rai Vaitano, Fran Garcia scored a really beautiful goal, and Real Madrid uh, fandom or speaking about how he'll be so much better than Mendy, like they can, they're already having wet dreams about Fran Garcia and Vinicius going down the left wing and destroying every right back in La Liga. Do you think Fran Garcia is ready, though, for that? I never really knew if someone was ready or not because they step up to playing for Real Madrid where every performance is heavily scrutinized. It's huge. Like, again, I don't want to, I, I'm picking on him. I'm not going to hide it. Rafinha now, stepping up from Leeds to Barcelona is a huge step up. It's kind of like stepping up from Real Madrid to Real Madrid. So we can never tell how anyone can really perform. And when you also factor in that he's he's young, but I don't think he's that young. He's yeah. youngish, yeah. I, um, Frank Garcia is youngish, so yeah. it's probably take him a while to probably get settled. Mm. Maybe Ancelotti. You also have to think out who the Real Madrid coach for the future might be. If it's Ancelotti, I can see him taking a good amount of time to get into the team because it's Ancelotti. Yeah, but the thing though with Ancelotti is that when if you're a left back that's genuinely doing really well, I feel he'll keep him in the team because that's what we thought of with Vinicius Jr. when he he broke out. Yeah, Ancelotti was like Vinicius is having a, a great moment. I'm mm-hmm. gonna keep him in the team, and he continues to keep him in the team. So I feel it, Frank, depend, it depends yeah. on how he does, which we can't really say. Is there an argument to be made that he is possibly top three left backs in La Liga at the moment? Who is the I would say at the moment it will be Gaia, Balde, and Fran. I'm trying to think of Because Acuna has had an off year. Alex Moreno has gone to. Gone. Yeah. yeah. So two kids and a guy who's in the relegation zone. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what that says. You can draw your own conclusion, but... Well, well, there, I mean, there, Renaldo could, could have had a shout, but like he is... Renaldo wasn't really doing too well this year. Yeah. If you consider her most a left back... Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But, we, can talk, we can even talk about him in this one, too. Because yeah, because he's, he's got... Great. And he does, he's really... Like, he's one that was really good in the title season for Atleti and then just fell off a cliff since then. But he's gotten over his um you know issues earlier this season and he's doing really well now. So well, I mean all these players are fantastic players in their own way. So. Yeah. But what what stops to go back to Atleti, what stops Atleti from replicating this next season? Because my fear with them is that they're gonna start the season very well. Expectations are going to be super high going mm-hmm. twenty three, twenty four. But when the pressure comes, they're going to crumble again. And it's going to be another season where the first half isn't as good, and they're like, "Oh, we're going to make this amazing comeback," and they come back in their third, and it's going to be like Groundhog Day every single season. That's my fear. Mm-hmm. For them. Well, I think that as long as they end the season well enough, uh, is the is the transfer window that's key. Yeah. If they can really reinforce the squad, then I can see them, you know, doing better. Yeah. If they don't. Some of the players that are playing well now, they are not exactly like the jury is still out on a lot on some of them. So, besides Griezmann, 
and to some extent Morata. Some players still need to show us more. Yeah, I was also Morata, but seeing the way he like dived and <laughs> a couple of chances, I'm like, Alvaro, man, I, I was rooting for you, but that I, that's all very for you. Man. He's going yeah. to miss some clan guys. I I feel I feel he's the kind of guy who does better when his position is not that no one's position is under threat when he's second in line, and you give him that slice of hope that he could be first. I think that's when he does his best. But when he's the main guy, I feel that pressure like weighs too heavy on him. Yeah, and I, I, I can see that. I can see your point. Yeah, and when someone is breathing down his neck, I think that pressure weighs heavily on him too. Like he's someone who does all without pressure, and it's just 15, 20 minutes. I'm going to prove that I should be starting. Well, well the boys you give him a pressure. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unless he wants to. Go to Saudi Arabia and <laughs> <laughs> join Christianity. Then you <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think with that, we should move, we should move on from Atleti and go to Sevilla. Uh, now we can talk about our good friends, the Gestapo referees who decided no, to say, Wait, a- you said I thought the Gestapo were the other guys above the referees. Oh, no, yeah. you know, those that. We can't name. I know, <laughs> but their their name is also similar with a video game, and another one's name starts with U. <laughs> you know those those guys. Yeah, yeah, but the henchmen, they're they're working. The, the really henchmen hard. are a problem. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes. They're working really hard. Like like in this game with Severe Delta, first eighteen minutes, Gaia gets a red card. I, when I first saw that, I was like, what did he do? <laughs> these, these referees are... <laughs> it, it, it's when, when you see that, and you see the Chuamani tackle on Samu Chukwese, and you see that wasn't even given a card. And I know it's our boy Rojas, who I, I have a crush on, right? So I'm always going to support him, man. I'm, I'm going to let that slide. Although that's... <laughs> Let's let that slide. That, that, yeah. that, 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 could, that could have been orange, right? <laughs> But, but when, when you look at that and you look at the tackle game made on Aspas, which is very slight, right? Why, why give him a red? What, so the naked, I, the yeah. naked eye won't even see anything at first. Yeah. It's only on replays that you be like, oh, he just touches him ever so slightly. And the thing is that I didn't watch the game live, so I didn't see what his first yellow card challenge looks like. But I can guarantee you it wasn't yellow card worthy because we've seen <laughs> The same nonsense from these puppets every weekend. Yeah, and, and Fernando made a good point that in England there are thirty red cards. Uh, in Spain, at, at that point, that this was the first match day in La Liga, right? And more red cards yeah, came. Yeah, so of course, hundred red cards and, and more red cards came. And he makes a good point in that a lot of tackles that are soft tackles, the yellow comes out too soon. Mm-hmm. For a lot of second yellows, the referees have no patience in in this league. Because it, it's almost like, with, in some cases, after the, your first foul, after your, your first yellow, you're given a red card. And you have to have more patience. You have to give them, like, the players, like, warnings. I remember when I first got into soccer, right? And I was first learning about the game. Like, a guy would make, like, three or four fouls before the yellow comes out. Mm-hmm. And the ref would, like, uh, as long as, if a guy's being persistent or makes a really nasty tackle, that's when the second yellow comes out. But in Spain, mm-hmm. like, people get yellows for descent. And then this next soft tackle is a red. That you can't have a league running this way, right? Because at the end of the day, not only are you going to turn off fans from the game, you're going to turn away players. Like, because what player wants to come here or to come to Spain and to rack up their cards or to come there and, or what manager wants to, to manage in a league where for the slightest tackle, he knows he, his, player, his, his team could be down to 10 men. And that's affecting the image of the league, in my opinion. And that's made the season a bit less enjoyable. You couldn't have said that any better, my friend. Yeah. (laughs) Honestly, me, who loves this league a lot, this is the one thing that's killing it right now. Like, just the referees being absolutely useless at their job. Yeah. Like, I'm tired. Like, you would think this league is boiling. It's not, it's, it's, yes, it's, it's more physical than people give it credit for because of all these 
stereotypes. You know, the same people that think Italy, Italy is still a defensive league. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those kind of people. Like, honestly, yeah. this league is just, so, like, the referees don't help matters at all. And I don't think they help Spanish teams too well because I remember a game between Borussia Dortmund and Sevilla and Lopetegui had a point when he was still manager at Sevilla and he said that the tackles that we see, that we've seen today in our league, this would be yellow or red, mm-hmm. but we play at a European system where they don't even call those tackles. And I feel in some ways Spanish football has moved slightly away from or has moved behind when the game has become more physical, more athletic, not in terms of the players that are in Spain, but in terms of the way the game is refereed. Mm-hmm. If every referee refereed like um, Rojas, our friend, I think the league will be a lot more enjoyable than it is at the moment because yeah. he's the kind of referee that allows the game to flow. He's the kind of referee that when he needs to step in to give a red card, although with Charmaine, that was, that was an orange, uh, uh, I'll let it slide, but when he needs to give a red card, he's done that. He's done that in the past, and it's, it's all like it appears to me that it's somewhat humble in the way he referees the game, unlike the other um, I, yes, that I, I refuse to use a more colorful term for them. But rant over about referees, let's talk about the game. Uh, this is going to be a longer podcast <laughs> because of our section of referees. Uh, Sevilla, they after the red card happened, I thought they played really well, and even occurred to my mind that maybe maybe they might be okay against Manchester United, maybe. But Sevilla, they, they did a Sevilla and they allowed Celtic to come back in <laughs> later on with two goals. To be fair, they were down to 10 men, so it was expected that Celta would. It was actually a huge surprise that Sevilla did as well as they did. I think, you know, from getting so many red cards this season. They have the experience of playing well with 10 men. Because <laughs> I remember they actually played with 9 men against Real Sociedad and played yeah. a very good game. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Paciencia scored a very... I, I think that was a slightly controversial goal because when he jumps up to head the ball, his hand goes over Oliver Torres, which you could disallow for a goal. You could potentially disallow the goal, but then the goal stands... Acuna tells the ref like he's a character and he, he gets himself sent off. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. These refs are so the standard four team band to... that's coming. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, it's just it's a circus, man. Like, yeah. But, but I, from, oh, go it, on. It, ha- it has to stop because it's really killing the league. It, it, it really is. It like, really is. It's like you can you can talk about like if you're talking about oh why our team is more defensive and scrappy, the genesis of the problem comes down to the people that control the flow of the football match, and that's the referees. Yeah, yeah, and even the good thing is like you can also people would criticize the league or La Liga and say like oh it's in decline or blah blah or like the stars aren't there, but compared to other leagues, right? Like if you compare La Liga to let's say the Bundesliga, I think La Liga is more scrappy than the Bundesliga. The difference still with both leagues or even with Serie A where La Liga is better economic power than Serie A. But with Serie A, you see a lot of good flows in games. In the mm-hmm. Bundesliga, you see good flows in games that it's lacking here. And if you want the league to be portrayed in a good light and you want to gain back some of the muscle from English football, I feel it starts with cleaning out, cleaning house with the referees, to be honest, because the referees determine the the flow and the level of the show. I should trademark that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but l- l- let's not talk about referees too much. We're going to talk about them a bit more when we move on to Sevilla's rivals, uh, City rivals, that is. But with Sevilla, do you see, do you see improvements since Mandela has come in? Well, when you, look, when you bottle it to go lead, it's frustrating <laughs> and it feels like a loss. But when you, I was listening to someone on Viva La Liga and they were like, um, at the end of the day, you've gotten four points from your first six points under your new manager. It's, it could be worse. Yeah, it could be worse. But I guess if you're a Sevilla fan or you like Sevilla and you see that they could have had 34 points, they could have been seven points ahead of Valencia in the relegation zone. 
and when you're in 34 if like with 10 games to go if i win two more i'll be in 40 or if i, I just need to win three more games and i'm safe so it, 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 this was possibly a setback for them but i agree with you i think four points from six games is good the next game is against oh, yeah yeah that would be interesting. Yeah, that would be according, according to Graham Hunter, it's like two brothers of the league who perform Patrick's <laughs> I, I hope Sevilla will do us a favor and remember we're both fighting the same uh, duopoly and <laughs> let us stay in the league. Uh, but it's harder for Valencia because Cadiz is doing so well. And speaking of the Gestapo, we're going to talk We're going to talk more about referees with Sergio oh, Fernandez. Because... God. <laughs> Like, I'll tell you this, right? Yeah. I'll, I I couldn't work, again, this is another game I couldn't work because of real-life issues. Yeah. <laughs> but um, that, that's for off the pod. Anyway, I was I heard that Bet has got a red card. My mind <laughs> went, I'm not, my mind was, I was like, okay, no surprise. I'm like, wait, who? My mind, I'm like, there's no way this is Canales because if this is Canales, given that <laughs> Bet is did the... Barcelona yeah. to get him to play. Yeah. Like this would be a sick joke and then I open super score and guess who gets sent off? Canales, man. <laughs> now when I saw the actual foul, I mean we we both agree the Legion Marata one is a bit you can see why they gave a yellow here. Yeah. This ref didn't hesitate. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it yeah. reminds me of. Sorry to go out to Barcelona, but I remember when Lonus got sent off last year. Yeah. And Al Pazano ran straight to him and didn't hesitate. <laughs> it's like these referees get turned off from abusing their. Power. I'm like, okay. Oh, so we, we established that these RF, whatever their names are. Yeah. They waited for Canales to get fit again before slapping with the bad. Yeah. <laughs> then after they beat the bad somewhat, he gets injured. So he gets red carded, which means he could miss even more games. Yeah, you you, could, you just tell it could come. Like that, that's thing with the that's thing with the referee. I, I call them Gestapo because even from Valencia point of view, this has happened. I remember when Rodrigo complained about the refs in one game. And the next game, his goal is like ruled out for the slightest of touches, and I'm just mm-hmm. like, oh man, like you don't you don't mess with that. <laughs> you, don't mess with that. <laughs> you don't mess with that. But the second red that Betis got, that was we we can't. We got no, no, no that, that, that was <laughs> no, that, that was stupid from Rebo, like... But but when when you're you're playing against someone like Fali and stuff, and you know he's someone who you know he's someone that's going to. <laughs> I'm keep what I to say to myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we don't want to get cancelled, but like next week when they when they play Real Madrid, uh uh Cadiz are playing Real Madrid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fali Alejo. Can we have a celebration? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, you have a sound for this. Oh, I do. Let's see. <laughs> that Brazilian one that's like <laughs> Yeah, that's the Alejo guy. versus Vini. I'll be there no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, yeah, but anyway, back to this. Um, yeah, back back to uh, Calico. Like, they don't look like a team that's going to go down. And since, unfortunately, since the four zero <laughs> that they suffered under Barcelona, they've just gone from strength to strength. They've been improving, mm-hmm. and they've taken good advantage of Betis going down to ten or nine men. And a moment for Chris Ramos, who's I found out he's a Cadiz fan, like a young. Yeah, player. I found that too. And that that was a big moment for them, and this is the mm-hmm. first time they've won in La Liga in City of Seville. Wow, uh, yeah, that's huge. That, yeah, that's a huge statistic. Yeah. And so, Saki, yeah, but on Chris Ramos, like, yeah. I the first time I saw him play, he came on against Barcelona when we beat Cadiz yeah. in February, and I thought, I thought he looked all right. So I was like. He gave them a different dynamic. He's he's pretty quick. He's pretty tall. So I was like, yeah. shouldn't they play this guy more? And uh, yeah, I mean, his goal is a bit of a yeah, it's a tap. It was a bit of a FIFA goal, but yeah. I mean, you have to score them. And I'm for a long time for Cadiz fan. This will obviously be a great dream and could be start of something special. 
Yeah, it could be, especially when you figure out that he was playing for Lugo, who are the bottom of the Segunda, uh, Segunda, and they're most likely going to go to the third division, and he gets a chance to play in the big leagues in La Liga. So, really good for him. Valencia might be joining uh, the Segunda because this was a big sucker punch, like losing to Almeria, because mm-hmm. not only do you lose the three points, Almeria gains the three points, and they gain the head-to-head advantage. So this is like a good punishment for Valencia this game. The way the first goal went in was kind of sad, because Nico went Nico went out injured, Cliver got injured, so it's like the worst things, worst-case scenario for Valencia just happened within five minutes. Yeah. And the lineup for Valencia was really prone because now we discussed last week that I think you should get as many forwards on the pitch as possible because the midfield doesn't do it right now. And then yeah. your best player from the last game gets injured. Nico, who just came back, is injured. And then you lose this important game. Yeah, and I was pretty optimistic before because uh, I remember telling you on the podcast that the next couple, the next like seven games, this was before the international break, are promising because they're teams that are winnable and teams that aren't in good form like Rayo or Almeria. But now, two games in, <laughs> one point out of six, it, it looks like less promising. The good news for Valencia point of view is that by the lead aren't doing too well, Espanyol aren't doing too well, so they're still they're still hope. Um, you need one Espanyol below Valencia right now, so yeah, they need and, to be worrying about what. What's above, and by the lead, the apps come to Messiah, so that's 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 a good sign. But they uh, they have a new coach, uh, but also from an Almeria point of view, I felt in the, I felt the first half was a bit even, mm-hmm. but the way they switched up in the second half, in the first ten minutes of the second half, was really was really special from their point of view. And after they got the two goals, although they slipped up to make it two one, they were counter attacking so well, and they mm-hmm. defended really well in the, in the last mm-hmm. minutes of the game. Yeah. I mean, Almeria has generally been very good at home this year. Yeah. They, they're yet to win an away game, so if they stay yeah. up without doing that, that would be, <laughs> that would be yeah, something. Be but, to, yeah. but eight home, eight home wins, like that just shows that the Powerhouse Stadium is a real <laughs> fortress. I mean, the mighty Barcelona lost there too, so yeah, anyone yeah. can yeah. lose there. Yeah, they really have some power horse power, right? Eh? Yeah. <laughs> Part of the fun. Yeah. Uh, and, and thing is, if Valencia weren't in a relegation zone, I actually wouldn't want Almeria to go down. I won't be rooting for them to lose points because they have an interesting project. They have mm-hmm. lots of really young talent, exciting talent that's coming through. But what's really helped them is the experienced players. Players like Malero who came from Levante, who scored in this in this game, and he's really taken them to another level. And Barbara was really doing well for a while, but I think he's gotten injured and he's somewhat he hasn't come back into the picture. But another player on highlights is Sam Acosta, who's did really well, good defensive job. And if yeah, if he provided go, the assist as well for the first goal. Yeah, and if Almeria do go down, I feel this is one player who I feel I think La Liga clubs should look at because he's he's young. Yeah, and he's someone who has lots of projection. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Almeria's project is really interesting. Um, I, I know I said they finished bottom because they sold Sadiq, but they've done really, really well without him, and I'd like to see them stay up now. Yeah, and this win was also without Bilal Torrey, so it might be how impressive this this was for them. And mm-hmm. the only downside for Almeria is they have some tough games coming up. They have Atleti next, and then I believe after Atleti, I think they have. Tafe, I'm not sure, which doesn't seem so tough, but I'm just going to look, look at the fixtures. No, they have, they have Athletic Club, Athletic Club, then Hetafe, then Real Madrid. So those are four games where you would expect them maybe to get three or four points. But maybe that might be enough, given that the other teams around them might not generate as much points. Mm. True. Um, there, they might, they might be facing some teams like Real Madrid who might not even take that game that seriously if yeah. they're still in the Champions League or the gap is still um, un- un- unreachable from a Barcelona point of view. Yeah, that, that is very true. Let's move on to the game of the weekend. Who would have seen this coming? Mallorca by the lid. 3 3, 6 goal thriller. What happened? 
goalkeepers who have got how to keep. <laughs> but there, there were some really good goals, though. There are some really good goals in here, but yeah. I don't remember which one. I think the first Mallorca goal, I thought Masif should have done a lot better. Yeah. But, but besides goal... that, really good finishes. Montreux's header was really good. Um, the strike from Orlanes was also really, really good. Yeah, the one from PK was like the least. PK Perez, like the first goal was. was, was... Oh, yeah, that, that, that was a very good strike too. And then Amala got his. I think that's his first goal for Real Valladolid. Yeah. Him wearing the number nine shirt kind of threw me off. I was <laughs> like, wait, who is, who is this new striker they got along with yeah. Barry? <laughs> Yeah, and so it's it's a good. It, it looked like a good day for the new manager, which I'm gonna because his name is a bit hard to pronounce. So bear with me, Pezzolano. Pezzolano, yeah. Pezzolano. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. Yeah, I was I was crazy in time. It's, Elche, Elche's um new manager. Uh, yeah, well, I'm not gonna try that. <laughs> Bergasessi. Bergasessi, or... yeah. I almost said Bergarici from La Liga. Yeah, Bruno. Yeah, yeah, Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Bruno. <laughs> But Pezzolano, it, it seemed like it was a very good start. And when it was 3-2, I was praying to God that a miracle happened. <laughs> a miracle. <laughs> and the miracle came from the pirate, Murici. My favorite player. He, he, saved, he, saved, he saved me from dying on Sunday. Because <laughs> I, I went to an if I deleted one and Valencia lost that. This, was, <laughs> this, uh, been. this wouldn't have been looking good at all. <laughs> yeah, because I said on this podcast confidently that I think we, I think by the lead, our six weeks. <laughs> so, <laughs> if we can't even catch them, we're finished. <laughs> yeah. Was there your next best chance is the Taffy, who <laughs> are, have we talked? To, oh, yeah, Taffy. Yeah, yeah, we're talking, yeah. Um, who, you know, are, are facing a toothless team next week. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Vice are definitely going to need to start picking up their own points. Yeah, they definitely are, but. Let's not talk about Valencia anymore. Let's talk about brighter subjects. The Champions League. Um, maybe Ooh. not. <laughs> but the Champions League is back. Yay. Yay. Be, be more excited about it. Uh, there's some... Be more excited about seeing Real Madrid. Come on. Bayern. I was I was sure. <laughs> Bayern, Bayern or City can stop them. You never know. I knew it will be embarrassing. It's anyway. more likely Bayern because this weird formation I keep seeing City play is not helping my confidence. <laughs> yeah, like, like, how do you th- how do you feel? That's the glamour tie of this round, Bayern versus City. Do you think they would live up to expectations? First of all, sometimes these games don't. Sometimes they do, but as got to sometimes it may be good. Yeah. Sometimes it may be shit. <laughs> <laughs> but but you're gonna go on. I mean, I hope it lives up to it, and I hope. Ho- All I want is that Real Madrid is stopped, guy. I don't. If I be honest, I don't care. So, so no, no, no hope for the mighty Frank Lampard. He's back. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not joke. It's not joke. He's done special things before. Chelsea, Chelsea have made a lot of stupid decisions this season, but getting Frank Lampard back has. <laughs> If Chelsea get, if Chelsea escape the Bernabeu with a draw, I'm going to sing that dreaded anthem next week. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. that's how conf- like the only thing Chelsea have going for them is that there might not be a Ber- there won't be a Bernabeu remontada if Chelsea do get the lead somehow. But looking at their performances, it's just so funny. No, no. I mean, if John, John Felix Hatrick would be different, though, but that, that's never yeah. been to happen. I, I don't think I can take a job for the Hatrick. I'm the <laughs> number one. I'm number one member of the Zetas Club. And so, yeah, maybe, maybe a much. I think I just watch the game because sometimes I like to make myself angry and disappointed for no good reason. <laughs> no, no, you shouldn't do that to your family, bro. Just make yourself happy. Uh, you, um, you, should, you should watch Milan Napoli, which uh, the first. It's on the same day. Yeah, it's on the same day. The then first... I'm watching that then. <laughs> I believe so. I, I could be wrong, so I'm just going to check our good friend's foot mob. So, no, no, yeah, yeah, Milan-Napoli is the same day as uh, Real Madrid-Chelsea. And the first game, Milan-Napoli ended 4-0. I'm sorry, the last game ended 4-0 for Milan. 
Carlo Ancelotti has boldly predicted, like he did in the Copa del Rey, that he's going to see some Milanese boys in the final with Real Madrid. So he's going to be right or wrong in this in that one, Oscar. Despite that huge win by Milan, I think if Napoli have us men, but it will be a different prospect. And I still think Benfica is stronger than both Milan clubs. Benfica. Yeah, I shouldn't. I know I shouldn't make both teams, but I think they will be in the semi final. Yeah, please don't curse him. You already cursed all the German clubs now. I, I like. Who did I jinx? You jinx Dortmund. That's Dortmund. They jinx themselves, man. No, no. And, and then you, my you, hand, my hands are clean. There is a Dortmund you, team. You, you, you made that bold prediction about Leipzig. Okay, okay. I like my feet, guys. So don't, don't, okay, okay, don't. okay, 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 okay. I, I I got a lot of I personally got a lot of flap of other Leipzig one. So yeah. I've already said it though, so yeah, yeah, you've you already you already said okay. it. Okay, Real Madrid are going to win the Champions League. I was about that. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that sounds funny. That sounds funny. Yeah, but it's generally um, like I said when we previewed this the first time. I'm generally excited for it. Mm-hmm. I, I'm biased, so hope my hope for the winner is either Bayern Munich or the Benfica Inter. Yeah. Wherever, wherever wins Anyone from the Italian side and not Real Madrid or Real Madrid. Chelsea or, or City. <laughs> so Bayern and any anyone from the other, the good side as well, we'll say. Even then with Bayern, it's just much less yeah. of, the, of the evils on their side. Sure, sure. Should we be rooting for Bayern given what they did to Mario Dortmund? I don't think so. There's that. There's that. Yeah. If, Goodness, I just remember they have to Yeah. <laughs> crap. Now now drinks aside, remember do that actually going to be in the final because <laughs> yeah. someone Thomas Tuchel gets to the final quite frequently, so he didn't get to the final against them last time though. True, yeah, but really... when they had no center backs on the pitch. <laughs> Marcelo. The team's no, Real Madrid have escaped. Don't make me angry. Honestly, last last year was a bit like it was just a bit special for Real Madrid. And to be honest, like I'm I'm, the, I'm one of their biggest haters. But last year, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to join the dark side for once because of all the like Premier League uh, banter and stuff. So that was fun for me to watch. Yeah, at that point, at this point, I have no shame anymore. I don't care if Chelsea win it. Just if they stop Real Madrid. And they win it. That's the UCL trophy for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, maybe maybe the real European trophy was the real Madrid that was stopped along the way. Yeah, yeah. Or, or every the, the entire world uniting against one Spanish club. Like it used to be against Barcelona and now it's against Spanish yes, club. We, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. But let, let's move on to the Europa League, the superior competition in Europe when there's some tasty ties. Yeah, yeah, I can agree with that one. We have last year's um, final of the Conference League, uh, final against Roma. We have Leverkusen against uh, St. Gila. Manchester United against Sevilla. We sort of previewed that. Uh, is there any hope for Sevilla? Well, my United had my United lost in Newcastle recently, but Sevilla Sevilla should just lose on Korea. <laughs> should just lose. And gets promotion secured because, yeah. but Sevilla winning the Europa League and getting relegated would be really funny. <laughs> also, it was just funny to see Mandela Bar in a European, <laughs> big European night going to. I, 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 I can't wait for that. I want to see how he does. A, wearing his fancy suits and everything. It's like yeah, until I turn off the TV in the rotation after your Rashford hat trick. Yeah, We're, apparently Rashford might not be able to make this tie. That's what I saw recently. I'm, in Facebook, you know how reliable Facebook is too. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. If my United are missing Rashford, then Sevilla may have a chance because no one else really steps up for my United like Rashford. Yeah. Recently, like, in terms of the volume of goals he scored. Like the thing is, the last time Sevilla was beat, they've beaten my United twice um, in European competition, and the first time they beat them. Because of their superior midfield, because they had Vanega and Zon mm-hmm. really, really balling in that game. The second time, because of their great defense. And that's something that worries me, because they don't have that midfield anymore. The defense is 
a pack of chewing gum. Mm. And yeah. uh, and then the oh, I also saw something like Serie fans were like, Bono should come back in because <laughs> yeah, the, I don't I don't I think the movie the movie could have done better for both goals on the weekend, but I feel. Yeah. Maybe I was big. maybe I was influenced by the comments I read. Yeah. In any case, Bonnie needs to play in this game. If Dimitri is playing, then that's just pure nepotism. <laughs> yeah, and, and Bono he had that big moment against Manchester United in Germany in Cologne, and he made a couple of big saves against the former Sevilla boy Anthony Martial is going to be coming back, or or is going to play against them. The guy that Sevilla stoked all their money on to win La Liga last season. So <laughs> it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun game. Yeah. And then there's Juve against Sporting. So that's going to be always interesting. Juve, they finally lost in Serie A. I was getting a bit worried for Italian clubs because I was like, this would be so embarrassing. If yeah, exactly. <laughs> but Lazio put them back in their place. Uh, we already spoke about Vlaovic. And this will be interesting, won't it? Yeah. Um... I think I'll still go on you with this one because I, I need them to. I, I need Pogba to knock my United out for the bands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the bands would be the bands would be incredible. <laughs> yeah, as a Spanish football podcast, we have to speak about one of the brimming Spanish managers in European football right now, and that's Xavi. No, it's Xavi who's uh, managing by Leverkusen, and he's done a very good job since he's been there. They mm-hmm, were in yeah. the bottom three, and now they're they're five points away from top four. Um, this, if he gets to the semi final, that would be a very good feather in his cap in this season. Um, that, then I think this will like be a real opportunity for him as a manager to just give himself the real magic job. Yeah, for sure. Especially if Carlo Ancelotti stays there for a lot longer period than we think. Like, this mm-hmm. would be very good. And yeah. who better to audition for that job than if he gets Jose Mourinho in the semi final? Jose Mourinho mm-hmm. with Xavi Alonso. Yeah. Yeah. It, it seems like what the script writers want is Xavi by Leverkusen Roma, Mourinho versus uh, uh, Alonso. Next year, next year, Juventus, because that's always a European classic and uh, it's Papa coming back against United. So. Yeah. Very, very interesting tie all around. The, the, the biggest, the funniest thing will be Mourinho beating my United in the final. Final. <laughs> that, that will be. And then speaking about how Tiki Taka is dead and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. Especially against a guy like Ten Hag, Mourinho mm-hmm. would love it. He would love it. Yeah. Yeah. But. Given that we've said all that, have we missed anything, Oscar? Or is there anything to talk about that you want to mention? No, I think we, unless you want to talk about how Riba wasn't the only player that played for a Spanish club to punch people, then I think we're done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're done. We're done. We'll, we'll leave. We'll leave that to another. The we'll cops. More, yeah, to the cops. Yeah, as, as yeah. usual. Let, 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 let them do their job. Yeah, because we don't. See, we didn't see what happened. We didn't hear anything. Mm-hmm. We, we didn't we hear anything. Them. Yeah, but yeah. We just know that um, violence <laughs> violence can be fun. <laughs> yeah, I, I, all I'll say is I wish she did it on the pitch. Then like, we so we could so we could laugh. So we could see. Yeah, yeah. It's like off, off, off the pitch feels a bit. <laughs> yeah. And then waiting in the car. <laughs> all right. Yeah. We should we, we shouldn't be like well. Yeah. Hopefully. Then, not the Mourinho memes, oh my god. Yeah, those <laughs> Mourinho memes. I was like, this isn't too funny until I saw the Mourinho memes. I'm like, why am I kidding? <laughs> yeah, but with that, kids, violence isn't fun, uh, unless you do it on the pitch, and that's <laughs> signing off. Are we are really encouraging the next generation of Russians? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we need more of that. We need more. We need more teams and cantonas and... Gabby's. <laughs> Gabby's, yeah, the game's gone soft, man. Yeah, don't soft, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't condone violence, but if Gavi got a red card for taking out a certain Real Madrid player, I wouldn't have minded it. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes you, you just don't see that raw passion. Like Zinedine yeah, Zidane. Pa- pa- passion, exactly, Zidane, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and but, but with that, with us, like, we promote Spanish football and violence, so... 
That's that, that's the one thing. They're the same. Out. They're the same thing at this yeah. point. Yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. Thanks to the referees. Yeah. <laughs> And so we're just going to sign out and thank you guys for listening. Hope we entertain you and we provided you with great information. And if you liked what we you heard, you saw our jokes, give us a like, share, and we'll be back next week. Adios. Adios.